Good morning. Welcome to our services here at Azay City Church of Christ. It's good to see all of you this morning. Uh, members, welcome. Visitors, you're always our honored guests. So welcome to our worship service this morning. We have a gift of bread prepared for you out in the front foyer. We also would like to ask all visitors and members to look to the pew in front of you and grab a white card and fill that out so we can have a record of your attendance. Those white cards can be placed in our collection plate as they are passed around here shortly. I want to ask that you continue to remember Sister Beverly Hall in your prayers. She was seen last week in the ER for gallstones, and that surgery went well, so continue to pray for her recovery. Also, Jimmy Presley is recovering from an infection uh, for a ruptured appendix. He is back in the hospital, uh, and uh, doing, he's doing fair, but not doing as well as he would like to be doing, as his daughter puts it. He's milking it. So y'all make sure you uh, text him and tell him to hurry up and get better so he can get back over here and we can rib him. A little bit. But anyways, please keep Uncle Jimmy in your prayers. And then also, Christine Bennett is back in Mobile Infirmary, so please keep her in your prayers. Uh, We will be having Wednesday evening meal uh, this coming week, so you can sign up on your white card for that. Uh, Free birds, you will meet in the front of the auditorium following uh, this morning's worship to to discuss upcoming events. So free birds will meet in the front of the auditorium after worship to discuss upcoming events. For all those that were able to help this past week uh, to feed the MGM football team, I want to say thank you. Um, We fed about 140, it felt like 240 uh, football players with their uh, coaches and and the MGM staff, and we fueled them to a 35 to nothing victory over Robertsdale. So uh, thank you all very much for helping out with that. That's always um, a highlight of our fall to be able to serve our community. So thank you for that. Also want to uh, let you know that we have Matt O, and I'm going to ask Matt if he doesn't mind to stand up. I know towards the end of worship he's going to stand up and give a plug for Faulkner University. Matt is a recruiter for this area, for Faulkner. His name is Matt O. And listen, when I was going through college, when you were in a relationship, it was not official until it was Facebook official. Okay? Now that is irrelevant to anybody that is about 25 and under, right? And maybe even 50 and older. To Facebook, okay? It's only official when it's on Facebook. His name is Matt O, okay? It's Facebook official that is Matt O, right? So maybe he can give you a story on that. I guess maybe nobody can pronounce his last name, so he just said, listen. It's Matt O, period, that's it, all right? And that is Facebook official. Happy to have Matt uh, with us this morning. He taught our, um, our teen class and did a great job, and I know the, uh, the teenagers were excited about that. He brought two dozen donuts, so who's not to be excited about that? Um, so Matt, thanks for being with us, and again, he'll have a few minutes towards the end of our worship to uh, discuss some things that are on his mind. Before we begin our worship this morning, I'd like to read from Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Know in all things that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Let's worship together this morning. Let's bow. All glorious Heavenly Father, the creation that you have made for us to live in is wonderful and beautiful, and we appreciate it so much. And sometimes we do take things for granted, Lord. We pray that we do not do that. Help us always keep you in our first in our minds and first in our senses and everything we see and feel and, and touch that you created it, that you created it for us. And we glorify you in that, Lord. We have come together here this morning to glorify you and worship. And of all the beautiful things you've made, Lord, let us focus now on you and how worthy you are of our worship. Lord, thank you for so many things. Uh, we're, uh, we're thankful for the uh, opportunities that we have to serve you, Lord. We pray that we do that well. Uh, the ones that are mentioned here on the list that uh, are sick, they need our service, Lord. We pray that we do that. They need our prayers. We lift them up in our prayers, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that uh, uh, we have a, uh, or we glorify you in the right way. Be with us as we remember Christ, his death on the cross, that great sacrifice that he uh, gave for us so that we'd have forgiveness for our sins. We're so thankful and most thankful 
for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. Uh, bless our worship. May it uh, build us up that we might go out and serve you better. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Our first song this morning will be The Greatest Commands, number 448. Greatest Commands, this is a song to where we'll, the ladies will sing the first verse, then we'll add the bass the second time, the tenor the third time. So ladies, make sure you sing out really loud while we add the men's parts. 448. songs we'll have our children's offering sing Jesus loves the little children and Jesus loves me
In some of my readings recently, preparing for classes and just trying to be a better Christian, I ran across this phrase, this statement. There's a vast difference between working in order to be saved, which is a works-based law salvation, and God's grace working in us, which is a faith-based salvation by grace. Both work, yet one works out of fear and compulsion of fear, while the other works out of love and the compulsion of love. We've spent a lot of time talking about love and, and works and, and what, it, what that means. But I want us to examine ourselves right now. At this time that we have set aside to give back to God, in our hearts, are we doing this because it's what we're supposed to do, and this is the time, so I've got to give my money now, or are we doing it because we are in love with what God has done for us? Let's pray. Our most precious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the things that you've given us. We thank you for our physical blessings, our material blessings, but most importantly, Father, we thank you for our spiritual blessings. We thank you for Jesus Christ and the life that he lived, the death that he died, the sacrifice that he made for us that we could be called your children and have that hope of eternal life with you in heaven. Father, as we examine ourselves right now and, and we look deep inside of us, Help us to, to give back to you, not because it's what we're supposed to do and it's what we're commanded to do, but because of the love that we have for what you've done for us, that it's the only thing that can compel us at this, at this moment right now. Help us to give back in accordance to your will with a, a cheerful and just overcome with emotion, joy in our heart. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God is almighty. Whoa. 
In the Old Testament, when God led the children of Israel out of Egypt through Moses, God instituted a memorial so that they could remember what God did for them. We know that there are a lot of things in the Old Testament that correlate and correspond to the things in the New Testament. So in the New Testament, we have a memorial of what Jesus did for us. And Jesus instituted that memorial. But sometimes maybe it can lose its significance. Some have accused us of doing it every week, makes it lose its significance. But I'm of the opinion that it gives us an opportunity each and every week to examine ourselves. And we get to, at this time, not only remember what Jesus did for us, but we get to examine our faith, whether I have a, an active faith or a dead faith. I get to examine my gratitude. If I am thankful for the privileges that I have in Christ, my gratitude should be overwhelming. And finally, it gets, gives me a chance to examine my love. Where is my love for fellow Christians? Where is my love for fellow man? If Jesus didn't love me enough to die on the cross for my sins, I would be in, I'd be in a mess. So as we pause right now and partake of this memorial that Jesus instituted, let us examine our lives and see where we are. Examine our faith, examine our gratitude, and examine our love. Let's pray. Our most precious and loving Heavenly Father, we, again, we thank you for all the things that you've done for us, none more importantly than the sacrifice of Jesus so that our sins can be forgiven and we can have that relationship with you. Father, as we partake of this bread, which represents Christ's body that was broken on the cross, we pray that we will do so in a manner that is pleasing to you, that we will examine ourselves and deem ourselves worthy of partaking of this emblem. Father, help us to do so in a manner that pleases you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Continuing, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with us now as we partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents Christ's blood that he shed upon the cross to save us from our sins. We ask, Father, as we partake of this, that we will do so in a manner pleasing to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'll be reading Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imita imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for blessing us with another opportunity, Father, to worship you, Father, to be gathered together once again with our brothers and sisters, Father. We pray that our worship thus far has been pleasing to you and will continue to be, Father. We pray that we'll always have an excitement to to be joined together, Father, in excitement for worship, Lord. And we pray that uh, it never becomes a, we just drag in here to check a box. Father, we pray that you would be with the leaders here, Father, our elders, our deacons, and, and the future leaders of this congregation, Father. And there's going to be some very big shoes to fill one day, Lord, and we pray that we'll be ready, we'll be prepared, and we'll have a selfless desire to do so. Lord, we pray that you will be with all the, the sick, the shut-ins, Father, the widows, the expected mothers, and also, Father, those that chose not to be here for whatever reasons. Father, we'll please be with them and, and only the way that you know how. Pray that you'll be with Melvin, as he continues to lead us in singing, be with Terry as he's going to speak to us here in a few minutes. Lord, give him a, a sound recollection, recollection of what he has prepared and help us to be attentive to that, Father. Again, forgive us for our sins and be with us through the rest of this service, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the will, please stand while we sing this song. Our God, he is alive. After this, Brother Terry will speak to us. There is beyond the air It is great, 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 great to see you all this morning. Thank you very much for being a part of our services here at Azalea City. Thank you to Melvin for leading us in our singing today. Thank you to Jason for directing our minds in the Lord's Supper, for Seth and for Bubba, your prayer, your scripture reading. Thank you for those who got up this morning, prepared class, and thank you for you being here today 
coming and being a part of our services here. We're so excited to have everybody with us. I do want to say that today is Sunday afternoon for the Master, and so that's always a great event. If you can stick around, if you're visiting with us, hey, we'd love for you to come and eat with us. Enjoy that time together for us to get to know you, but then also there'll be some other things going on so that we can help serve our community, serve our Lord in, in those endeavors. Also, today kicks off our last to leaders, leaderettes for the upcoming 2020 year, convention year, and also you do not have to go to convention to participate, but those of you who will, there'll be some convention events that uh, we'll need to nail down pretty soon, that to, to, but Bible Bowl and I think puppets are meeting today, and so all those who are working with that, thank you very much, and so please take note of, of all the things that are going on. What it reminds me a lot of is everywhere we turn, we've got a lot of influence, don't we? Whether it's good influence or bad influence, we have influence. Uh, what I mean by that is this, uh, I can influence somebody to do good things, or I can influence somebody to do bad things. Uh, we talk about peer pressure with our teenagers. By the way, good looking group of teenagers up here. Appreciate you guys, or almost teenagers if you will. But we, um, we appreciate them, but we, we harp on teenagers a lot about peer pressure. Watch out for peer pressure, watch out for peer pressure, but we face it too. We face it in our works, we face it in our neighborhoods, we face it in, in the world, the communities we live in, and, and we have a, a peer pressure, if you will, a peer influence, if you will, where we can influence somebody to follow Jesus Christ or we can influence somebody to fall away from Jesus Christ. And that's just the, the hard reality of it. We all have an influence. So I want to ask you this morning, this question, I left it with you Wednesday night, those who are able to be here. And so today, as we go through this lesson, I want you to think about this. When people leave my presence, when it's an individual or a group or whoever, when people leave my presence, are they closer to God or further away? And that's where we're going to fall today. Either we're influencing people to be closer to God or, or they're falling further away. And so I want us to think about that as we talk about renewing ourselves today, renewing our influence for others towards Jesus Christ. In 2 Kings 5, we're going way back now, 2 Kings 5, we have a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman was a great soldier. And, and this story is a special story. You remember it tells us exactly that, that it tells us this, we have to do exactly what God says for us to inherit healing, salvation, to get rid of sin, okay? Naaman had leprosy. And so with that leprosy, he had to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Not six, not eight, not three, not two, not twelve, seven times. Once he dipped seven times, there was nothing holy about the Jordan River. There was nothing holy about the water that was in it. What was holy was God and is God. And God is the one who told him to do it. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. So it's a beautiful story of obedience. But I don't want you to focus on the story of obedience necessarily today. I want you to look in 2 Kings 5 as we begin to read. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. So what happens after this? He goes and he meets up with him. He's told to dip seven times. And he does that and he's healed. But here's where I want you to focus today is on this servant girl who we don't even know her name. You see, I think it's remarkable that in a story that's such an impact story. I mean, we have heard the story of Naaman. Chances are most of us in here have heard that story for quite some time. But here is an impact story in the Bible 
that has yet another unseen hero. And that unseen hero is a servant girl, a slave girl that was brought from Israel who waits on Naaman's wife and tells him about the prophet. She used her influence to help a commander of the army become whole again. See, today that Ill, the, the point is to you and the point is to me. No matter if we're a CEO or we're working out hard somewhere in our job just as a regular employee, no matter if we are the top student in the class or we are really near the bottom, no matter if we are... Uh, on a platform speaking or we are just talking to our buddies throughout the day. We have an opportunity to do great things with our influence. You and I have in our hands the ability to help somebody get cured of their disease. We don't do the curing just like the servant girl didn't do the curing but she pointed them in the right direction. And today, my, my brothers, my sisters, my family, we need to be pointing people in the right direction. We need to be pointing people to the cross. Wouldn't it be a shame? Now, now let, me, let me just say it this way, okay? What if when you saw me out and about, out and about, you overheard me using foul language? You're going to be very upset with me. You are. And you should be. Now, you shouldn't go gossip about it. You should come straight to me and say, hey, let me tell you something, buddy. All right? But, but I was using this foul language and everything else. We, you would be floored or whatever. Well, what about when we just hear somebody else that's a brother or sister in Christ? How are we reacting to that? You see, don't put me on a pedestal. I'm a Christian just like you're a Christian. I have an influence just like you have an influence. Well, if we hear our elders doing it, oh man, we're, well, we're supposed to hold them in. I agree with that. But what a shame it is if somebody says, hey, I'm not going to worship at Isaiah City Church of Christ because so-and-so goes there and I know how they act. Boy, that, that would be the worst thing Jesus Christ could say to me on Judgment Day. You see, that's our influence. That's what lies in your hands. That's what lies in my hands. And so I want you to think about it could be one word. It can be one act. It can, it can be just a, a moment of reaction to something that happens to us. Listen, we all hit our thumbs with a hammer every now and again. How are we going to react? How are we going to act when somebody cuts us off in traffic? How are we going to act? Listen, I'm not saying we're perfect but folks, we are called out. You hear me? We're not perfect, but we are called out. We are to be different than the world. And if I'm going to be different than the world, then I've got to act different than the world. I've got to act like Jesus Christ. I've got to be like Him. And so for us to, to illustrate this even further and challenge ourselves even further, I want you to join me in Ephesians 5 today. Ephesians 5. We're going to be looking at the first 16 verses of this chapter. It's kind of a long reading. But it's a lot of good stuff in here and our whole lesson is going to draw from this text. Verse 5, beginning in verse 1 that, that Seth read to us a moment ago. Therefore... Be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. It's about influence, folks, I'm telling you. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. We'll read that from another translation in a little bit, so keep that in mind. 
For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and Christ. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness... I'm sorry, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. This is very important. This last verse we're going to read today. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now Paul wrote that long before we got here, right? He wrote that a long time ago, but here we are in 2019. Does that not sound like us today? Hey, we got to redeem the time. We got to make the most of the time. I don't know how long I have. Now, I turned 42 years old this past week, okay? I like to think I got at least that more left, right? But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long you have, and you don't know how long I have, and we could all go today. Jesus Christ could roll back the clouds. But here's what I do know. That as long as I'm here, the days are evil, so I've got to make the most of my time to let my light shine. To get others to follow Jesus Christ. To influence them. Now, it's hard to do that in a parking lot somewhere, standing up with a bullhorn. But I can do it with my relationships that I build with one another. I can do it with my family. I can do it by befriending somebody, helping somebody, encouraging somebody. But I've got to do it. I've got to make the best use of the time because the days ahead are very, very evil. Now, there are two kinds of influences, and we can put them all in these categories, right? There's negative influence, of course, and there's positive, but we're talking about negative for a moment. Let me tell you about some folks that had some negative influence in the Bible. What about Pilate? Remember Pilate? Pontius Pilate, governor, right? He had the ability to let a thief and a murderer go or a miracle worker, okay? He could let go an awful man or the best man who's ever walked. And he chose to let the murderer and the robber go free and kill the miracle perfect man. Okay? The miracle worker, the perfect man. He had in it... Why did he do it? Here's what Mark says about it. Remember they cried out, crucify him? Pilate said, why? What evil have they done? But they cried out all the more, crucify him! Note this. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd release Barabbas, deliver Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Now did you hear that? Pilate did it because he was afraid an uproar from the crowd was coming. Those people were bloodthirsty. They wanted Jesus' blood on them and their children. Pilate wanted to wash his hands of it. But he didn't, and he delivered Jesus. Now, he had to die for us, I get that. But Pilate had the opportunity to let Jesus go. But he used his influence to lead him to the cross. Because he was afraid of disappointing the crowd. What about the innkeeper when Jesus was born? We don't think about that guy very much, do we? There was no room in the inn. I mean, if the innkeeper really understood, hey, this is the child of God, I'd just like to think I was going to be like, hey, man, can you, can you bump 
for a night so we can put the child of God in this room. Okay? I'm going to bump you. I'll, I'll give you, hey, we'll give you a voucher, okay? This is Jesus Christ. But the innkeeper didn't. He's like, I'm sorry, we're full. See you later. Woman's pregnant. About to have a baby anytime. We wouldn't have those cute little manger scenes, though. We'd just be in a Holiday Inn or something, you know. <laughs> but he didn't use his influence. Getting a little more serious with it now. What about Judas? Man, he walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He stayed with Jesus. He was in the inner circle, man. He could have been a guy like Peter, like Paul, like all these others that we talk about. But he used his influence as to inherit greed because he was greedy. At the Last Supper, could you imagine Jesus having supper with him? Knowing what Judas was about to do. And then there are men like Demas. Demas, who was at one time a great influencer for Jesus Christ. How do you know that? Well, I just assume it because Paul said in Colossians 4.14, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. He's sending these guys, Luke and Demas, to greet the church at Colossae. Sounds like a pretty good guy to me. Then he goes on to write, you know, we're reminded Demas was a supporter, a fellow worker. I'm, I'm also going to guess a friend. But in Philemon, verse 23, he says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow, fellow laborers. Fellow, we work together for the Lord. Demas is a great guy. He's using his influence for good. However, you get down to 2 Timothy and... Chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we have these words. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world, and has, operated, uh, has departed for Thessalonica. You see, Demas had lost the opportunity because he loved the world too much. Boy, isn't that a scary thought? on fire for Jesus Christ, doing what's best for God, and then all of a sudden, I love the world so much, and now I'm not a positive influence, I'm a negative one. But here's the good news. Even if that's you today, you can still be a positive influence. Think of these folks. How about that servant girl we talked about in 2 Kings 5? She could have kept all that to herself, right? She could have said, oh no, I'm not going to tell you about the prophet. But she didn't. Naaman was healed. How about Esther? I love the book of Esther, don't you? She's under a Persian king who, you know, the Jews are captured and, and she has the opportunity to become queen and use her influence and she did exactly that and it saved the Jewish race so that Jesus Christ could ultimately come to this world. Mordecai, her, her uncle, who was like her father, actually he's her cousin, uh, did the same thing. Okay, he was able to take her in and, and learn about Haman and not bow down to the threats of, of Haman and, and he was able to use his influence, as the Bible says, for such a time as this. You know, there's so many in the Bible we could talk about. We're here with the same opportunities in such a time as this. Sometimes it's 30 seconds with a girl in line at Walmart. Sometimes it's a few moments with the waiter at the restaurant. Sometimes it's how we respond to a situation when others are watching. You see, these things matter. <clears throat> you know, we have opportunity now more than we've ever had to influence people. Last Sunday we had a great crowd. This Sunday we've got another good crowd. But do you know that because of our live stream efforts and, and now we, we're able to track some, some hard data in that. Do you know that our worship service uh, reached about 700 other people besides us last week? You see, that's pretty powerful to me. And that's just going to keep growing and growing, so hey to those who are watching on the live stream. But the point I'm trying to tell you is we have more opportunities now than we've ever had to influence people for Jesus Christ. Are we doing it? Are we using it for good? 
I believe Ephesians 5 gives us some great things that we need to be reminded about. Here they are, if we're going to be the right type of imitator, I mean, right type of influencer. Number one, we need to be imitators of God. Go back to the beginning. In, in chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Therefore, be imitators of God. Now, if you back up to verses 31 and 32, which comes, that comes from, he says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. You see, you and I cannot imitate the world and have a godly influence. We're the called out. Paul said you got to put away things. Remember in, in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I acted like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, here's the thing. Let me say it in Terry's terms today. When I was in the world, I acted like the world. I talked like the world. I did what the world said. I, I was influenced by the world. But when I went down in this water and I became a babe in Christ, and I grew up, started growing up spiritually, and I put myself to death in the water that's behind this wall, guess what? It quit being about me anymore. It's about Him. And that's what it has to be. It has to be about Jesus Christ. If I'm going to be a difference maker... A difference maker. And I've got to imitate God. So what do I do if I imitate God? Well, I'm going to have compassion. I'm going to recognize people have needs. I'm going to... I'm, I'm, I'm saving love because it's the next point, okay? But I'm going to help and I'm going to forgive and I'm going to do a lot of things that the world says not to do. The other night, we were driving home, almost home. We're at a four-way stop. Those of you who've been to my house, you know probably where that four-way stop is. I am completely stopped. Hey, and I've got the, I don't care anything about my vehicle, really. I mean, I'm thankful for it, but it was what's inside the vehicle I really care about, right? My wife's in the passenger seat. My daughter's in the back passenger seat, and then Bo's on this side. And I, well, some guy... I'm clearly ready to go, but at a four-way stop, this guy just takes off. Well, I blew my horn at him, not because I wanted to be a jerk, but because that's my family. He flew his middle finger at me. And I want you to know, and I told my kids this, I want to chase that guy down and drag him out of that truck. And let him know, do you know who you just flipped off? <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what I told my family this. I said, I want to do it. Amen. <laughs> but, but, I've got an influence. And so we went home thankful to God that we didn't get hit. You see, that's, I'm telling you, I'm human just like you. There's nothing different about me. Okay, the reality is though, those are the situations we face that we must imitate God. And there's so many others we could talk about. Imitate God, how? As His dear children. Number two. If we're going to be influencers for Jesus Christ, then we must walk in love. Walk in love. If you go and you look at verse 2, he says, Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Boy, I'm telling you right now, we probably want to just quit reading, right? Because that's tough words. I mean, listen to it, folks. Don't let's, let's not just glance over it. Walk in love. How? As Christ also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. If I am going to have the type of renewed influence, then i got to walk this like Jesus Christ. That means i got to be willing 
to give myself to Him. I've got to be willing to love like Christ loved. To serve like Christ served. To give like Christ gave. And you know what? Quite frankly, not everybody's willing to do that. They're not. Jesus knew it. You remember when, when He said, you want to be my disciple? You've got to love less mama, daddy, neighbor, everything else. You, you, if you cannot love me and follow me if you do not first weigh the costs. He said, this is hard. Now, it's not as hard as some people make it out to be. But this is hard. You've got to make some decisions. Boy, isn't it better to, to err on love, though? You remember the Pharisees? We're talking about it on Wednesday nights and in the book of Matthew as we're going through that book. They were, man, they knew that law. They knew it backwards and forwards. But boy, they tried to get Jesus every time he healed somebody on the Sabbath. Man, they tried to catch him in something. Why? Because they didn't have the love they needed to have. And Jesus came and said, look, I'm not putting new garments on old pants. I'm not putting new patches on old pants. Why? Because it's not going to hold. He said, I'm not coming to patch the old law. Uh-uh. He said, I'm bringing something totally new. He said, you've walked in law, but now you're going to walk in love. And that's what we are to be. When we leave out of here today... Yeah, we need to know our books. Don't get me wrong. We better know the Bible. But we need to know that it is galvanized in love. And we need to be love leaders. People need to recognize our love. They, we need to point them to Jesus Christ. Thirdly, this morning, if I'm going to have an influence, then I've got to stay away from stink. I'm going to illustrate that to you in just a minute. But anybody enjoy just hanging around stink? You know, I, I appreciate the, the paper mill. It provided a good living and, and all for my dad and our family and my brother. And, and it, but it stunk so bad. I mean, it, it helped a lot of people. And, and people be like, oh, you get used to it. I worked out there two years. I never once got used to it. My clothes would smell like it, everything, it just stunk. And you know what those guys, those old timers, they would say, hey, it smells like money to me, you know? So guess what? I, I, I went to college, and I didn't do that route. Why? Because they didn't want to be around stink. There's a lot more to it than that. But, you, you know, if, if something's dead, anybody just want to, mmm, that's the best smelling smell I've ever smelled in my life. No. We stay away from it. We get rid of it. Why? Because it stinks. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of stink that we got to get rid of. We don't need to be around. Listen to this, going back to Ephesians 3, now, uh, 5, 3. And, and let me read it from a different version here. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, Worshipping the things of this world. It would be better off if I've got a lot of stink in my life. If I get in here and, and, and I sing songs like Up from the Grave He Arose and I'm singing it with all my heart because I'm thankful that Jesus Christ arose and I'm talking about you know, Jesus, and I'm talking about this, and I'm singing songs, and I'm giving in the plate, but then tomorrow I go out, and the first person gets on my nerves, I let a string of obscenity out of my mouth. It would be better for me to not say I belong to Azalea City Church of Christ. Or gossip. Or pornography. Or sexual immorality. Or keep putting it, drunkenness. What, put it in there. Whatever it is, put it in there. Because it stink. And we got to stay away from the stink. 
if I'm going to have a renewed influence. If I'm going to be what God called me to be. Because stinking thinking and stinking living will lead me to hell. Man, that's strong. I didn't say it. Paul did. He said, you will not inherit it. And, and see, those are things I'm, I'm called out, remember? When I became a child of God, I was called out. Listen, there's a right way to do it. I, I met with a, a dad the other day who was upset about some things that were happening at middle school football practice, which I'm not really supposed to be over, but I am. <laughs> But I was meeting with this dad who was upset and he just started using profanity. And I'm already a little bit aggravated because he's telling us we don't know what we're doing, essentially. And so I, I faced the situation. And I'm just telling you, I'm human. I really wanted to just say, shut your mouth and get away from me. But I've got to remember my influence. And so I said, hey, can we do this? Can we discuss this without you using profanity? You know what his excuse was? Hey, I'm sorry, I'm a sailor. Well, I, I know people that served in the Navy that are fine, upstanding people that do not talk that way. Okay? But my point of it is, I, I was faced with a situation, and, and, and I think we can, we can make our influence where it's still in love, and it's still the right way, but we are called out. We are called out is what I'm trying to say. Can we get totally away from the world? No, I mean, we, we can't, folks. We cannot get totally... We have to live in this world. But this world can't live in us. You know what Lot did? When Abraham said, hey, we can't stay here together. You know, the world's literally too big for us. You take and you choose. And Lot looked out and he saw the luscious land, green hills, beautiful flow. You know, everything was gorgeous. You know, it was right near Sodom and Gomorrah. He pitched his tent at Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot lived in Sodom. But Sodom lived in Lot's family. And we've got to be real careful about that. So finally, this morning, when I put it all together, you know what it boils down to? Simple as this. I've got to walk in the light. If I look at verse 14 again of Ephesians 5, he says, Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, awake from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Where does it come from? It comes from Christ. Jesus Christ is the light. And we've got to walk in Him. For if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. Man, what a beautiful thought. College football kicked off last night. It might have been a stinker of a game, but it was a game, right? You know what? They didn't do a lot in that game because they, they faked it a lot, but they, punt, they didn't punt a lot. But sometimes in life, we've got to punt. You know what I mean by that? Hey, man, we can't, we can't move the ball. We can't move forward. We can't do this. And hey, let's just punt and let's live to play another day. Well, I want to give you a word today. Punt. What do we need to do? First thing we need to do, if I'm going to punt life and I'm going to be a good influence for God, I need to produce good fruit. You see, in verse 9, he tells us about producing that fruit. Apple trees produce apples. Peach trees produce peaches. Banana trees produce bananas. We could go on and on, right? A Christian must produce love. That's what is blooming on our tree. If we're not producing love, then we need to get in some new soil. We need to, to get where we need to go. we got to punt. The U should stand for understand what is acceptable to the Lord. That's verse 10. 
You see, there are certain things in life that please God and there are certain things that don't please God. If it doesn't please God, it's stink and I need to get away from it. So produce good fruit, understand what's acceptable to the Lord. And then thirdly, verse 11, I need to have no part of those things if it's not. He says, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. I cannot hang out with sin. I just can't hang out with it. I mean, yes, we're going to, please understand where I'm coming from on that. We are going to be friends with sinners. But I cannot let the sin come in my life and just have a foot in my heart all the time. I got to get it out. I got to punt it. And then finally, we need to be transparent. We need to be, here we are. This is who I am. So tonight, today, I should say, today, do you need to punt some things in your life? Do you need to get rid of some things? Do you need to have a renewed influence? You see, I told this story uh, the other day in chapel, and I've told it here before. Uh, those of you who love animals, please do not hold this against me. When I was young, I had a pet bird. Okay? And this bird, you can ask my mom, was very mean. It was white with red eyes. I don't know if that was a child of de the devil or what. But it, it was a very mean bird. But it loved me for some reason. It used to be my grandmother's bird, so it had some sentimental value. She couldn't handle it anymore. She gave it to me. So it reminded me, not but she was the sweetest lady on the planet, but it reminded me, you know, it was part of that. And, and one day I was just kind of nuzzling with the bird because, you know, bird loved me. And that bird bit me on the lip. And when I was young, I had what I like to call anger sharks in my head. And they would surface... And instantly, when this bird bit my lip, it, the pain was so bad that I just, uh, incredible hulk, you know? So I didn't know what else to do, but I took and I thumped that bird right in the beak. And that bird went, his eyes rolled back in his head, his paws, or whatever they're called, legs just folded, and he fell over what I thought was dead right in my hands. And I thought, oh no, I've killed my bird. <laughs> so I cried. Because it broke my heart. I mean, this my grandma, I'm a grandma, you know, I love this thing. It just got wrapped up in a bad moment. <laughs> Tears, it's a true story. I'm not, it's not just a preacher story. It ran off my face, dripped on that bird, woke it up. Revived it. <laughs> I'm not making it up. That bird was renewed. <laughs> that bird was singing. And that bird never bit me on the lip again. <laughs> Today, we need to be thumped sometimes. We need to be brought to our knees. And today, through the tears, through the pain, if you need to give your influence to Jesus Christ, let's do it. Let's change this world. But let's start with us as together we stand and sing.
Be seated, please. Matt's going to come up. He's going to talk just for a minute. Then following that, we'll turn it back over to Brother Melvin. We'll have a, dis a closing song and dismissal prayer. But let me say my spiel real quick. Church, I love you. I appreciate you. People say good things about the Isaiah City Church of Christ, and that's because of your influence. So thank you for what you do and who you are. And Matt, thank you for what you do and representing Faulkner and everything else. So come on up, brother. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to go ahead and speak, but I want to be mindful of the time and lunch specifically. Uh, so I just want to address three quick things, if you let me. Uh, the first is... Good night. Y'all singing is amazing. Uh, really, it's amazing this morning. Uh, it was just so great. Uh, just wanted to hear y'all sing, so I appreciate that. Sermon, mm, it was okay. <laughs> uh, but singing, absolutely amazing. And of course, I did uh, with Terry there. One, I'm pretty sure he could throw me across the room. Two, uh, just because him and our connections here were so many, uh, Terry, Justin, uh, Brother Eubanks, and I'm sure many others that I'm not too familiar with just yet, but um, that said, Faulkner just sends all our love to you guys and appreciate the work here that's being done. Um, I also want to address some of the students that we have right now. Um, I know Maggie, I'm assuming she's enjoying her time. The only time I ever see her is when she's out on the football field in the middle of the day, uh, being part of band camp and everything like that when it's hot and sweaty. Uh, but whenever she's in the AC, she's having a great time. We see Courtney. Uh, I pass by her in the parking lot every morning at 8 a.m. when she's heading to class. So all these students, it's great to see around there. But they wouldn't have the history. They wouldn't have the influence. They wouldn't be who they were if it wasn't for you families and Azalea City as a church. So I appreciate all the efforts and all the work that you have done to make them who they are today. And so thirdly, that's what I would like to address, is I would love, Faulkner would love to continue that work that you have been doing here. Uh, we'd love to continue that influence uh, that y'all been bringing. Uh, Terry, if you'd allow me to go ahead and piggyback on that lesson, uh, influence does go a long way. Uh, I am not saying that the only way to go is through a Christian university. Um, if somebody decides to go to state school, decide to stay local, by all means, my wish, my prayer is that you make that school into a Christian school one person at a time. But there is something to be said. There is a difference between surviving and thriving. And one of the great things about Fowler University, it definitely provides the opportunity to thrive in your faith. Um, on top of that, I don't want people to think you've got to sacrifice between your faith and being successful in your career. Um, I don't believe that if we were uh, a bottom of the pole type of school, that we would have some people uh, who just recently been elected to the House of Representatives from our political science department, or had the number two superintendent uh, that graduated from our education department. Uh, we wouldn't have many of Alabama's own criminal uh, police officers and detectives uh, be a part of our criminal justice program as well. There are a lot of great things happening in our academics, whether it be uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and so many other programs. Uh, but I do want to address one thing before I step down. And one of those things that kind of scares a lot of families is the cost. And whether or not it's something that's going to be affordable to do. A uh, little something about me. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my dad was a Marine. He's been working with the VA for the last 20 plus years. Uh, my mom, for most of my life, wore two jobs. And I cannot thank her or show my love enough for that woman. But they gave me an opportunity. And if my family can make it, uh, find a way to go ahead and piece together uh, a way to make uh, Christian education happen, I know I can help any family do that as well. And I love that opportunity. Um, I'm going to be hanging around here for uh, the morning. I'd love to catch up with anybody. Uh, just go ahead and shake your hands and get to know you a little bit. Uh, but it was a pleasure to be with the, the youth group this morning. Great times. Parents, I'm sorry about the sugar rush. That's my fault, so I apologize about that. Uh, but guys, uh, please have a great day. God bless you, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Are there any announcements that have been overlooked that we may need to announce? If not, will you stand, please, and we'll sing one verse of when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day that you have blessed us with, the opportunity that we've had to come together and fellowship you. Please help us to have a safe departure today uh, into our day-to-day -day lives so that we can reconvene next week. Please help us to be the right influencers for you and to imitate what you would have us do. Thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us, and please help all those that need help or with whatever capacity that may be. Um, thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen.